again, I'd just like to say thank you for your kindness and, and all. And this morning, um, we want to step on the chart a little bit, if you all don't mind. Turn your Bibles to Proverbs, the 18th chapter. We got plenty of time to pick up the money. I just think that this is relevant for us today. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come now and bow. We submit humbly to your Holy Spirit. And we thank you, O oh God, for just allowing us to breathe one more time. Thank you for allowing us to be a witness for your word, and your goodness, and your mercy. God, we just thank you with all our hearts, mind, body, and soul. We truly appreciate how good you are to us because when we look around, we see so much and we hear so much. We feel so much. But yet you find it time, oh God, to just give us a little more grace. You allow us to move forward just a little more. Allow the steps to go forward just a little further. And we just thank you. Now, God, as we stand behind this sacred desk, we ask you to send the words you desire your people to hear on this morning. Open up their hearts and their minds, oh God. Oh God, allow them to really uh, understand what you are trying, uh, what you are saying, not trying to, but what you are saying to us on this day as we stand on the wall of this gospel. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to uh, look at verse number 19 and number 20. Verse number 19 and 20. And it, it reads, A brother offended is harder to be one than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. Uh, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, I, I want to talk from this subject, if you will. Watch what you say. Watch what you say. I particularly want to emphasize that God has given us the ability to have power of the word. I mean, when we look at this uh, uh, in the word here, God has given us that power. I know that a lot of times folk will tell us sticks and stones may break our bones, but words will never hurt. Words hurt. They, 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 they have power. Uh, young men often are determined by the words that are spoken to them by their parents. They, 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 they take the encouragement from those who may not be a relative. And they build their lives upon what other folk say. Words have power. Homes are torn apart by words. Marriages are destroyed by words. Churches are blown up by words. If, let me say this, Lord help the Holy Ghost, if the positive thing went from 
from the lips of the membership of Ebenezer rather than the negative stuff this church house will be filled. <laughs> but when people hear the power of the negative mess that comes from the lips when you think that it may not matter, it don't hurt, it hurts. What sounds better, I love you or I hate you? Both of them have power. So, so you need to watch what you say because your words have power. I particularly want to focus on some things that were said that we didn't agree with. About a week ago, a little over a week ago, we heard a verdict came into the courthouse or the courtroom at Sanford, Florida. Uh, a word that says not guilty. It was powerful. It set in motion uh, a, a determination by people who have been ostracized again for life. It is set in motion some things that could become turbulent. But I, I, I want to caution us <laughs> because we need to change our vocabulary too. Not guilty don't mean that you're innocent. Uh, you just mean that we couldn't find enough evidence to say that you're totally guilty. I mean, you're guilty of something. But, but you're not going to get away because when you stand before the righteous judge, God is going to judge you because everything that you say and do is written down. Watch what you say. Sometimes you talk too much. Ah, we realize that that, 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 that folk want to uh, protest. They want to march and say, I'm Trayvon Martin. And I'm marching against and I'm marching for justice for Trayvon. But what about justice for Shaquille Hargrove? What about justice for all these other young men who are getting shot by our own color? Hmm? Well, well, what about... Those young men that, that, that somewhere along the line has heard something negative about the way they look, the way they walk, the way they talk. I, I tell you that it's more than a notion uh, to think about how we will call each other the N-word and then want the pilot, won't, won't, won't the punish Paula D. We're quick to do that. But then as soon as somebody else, we want to punish them. Well, what's good for the goose is good for the gown. If she can't say the word, we shouldn't say the word. It's something that we ought to get out of our vocabulary. Oh, that ain't the only word that has power. Let somebody stand in your face in particular the female gender and use the B word. You're ready to go to war. <laughs> and then you got nerve enough to say it's only in the content that it was used. <laughs> All right, man. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Words have power. Yes. Watch what you say. James let us know that my brother, he said, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive greater con condemnation. For in many things we are all offended. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. And able also to bridle the whole body. Mm. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us. And we turn about their whole body. <laughs> Behold also the ships, which though they are so great, and are driven by fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small helm, 
Whithersoever the governor or the captain wants it to go. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fly it kindles. One word can set in motion things that sometimes cannot be controlled. We need to think about before we speak. Uh, I had a great teacher to tell me that. He said, folk will say things to you, but you can't return the same words to them. Yes. He said, always take in what's said. Process it before you respond. It governs what you say. Because a lot of folk will take stuff in and the first thing that comes in is what comes out. Come on, y'all. I know I'm right about it. We need to watch what we say. Some folk will go away from here today and declare that the church service was terrible. Because the church house is not full. But I got news for you. What about the church that's on the inside of you? How does that church feel? If that church is remaining empty when you leave here, it's nobody's fault but you. You shouldn't go out trying to destroy others' joy. But in, in, in the reference, you ought to lift them up. It's good to see that we do have a black president. It encouraged me to know that even though some folk may be born in poverty, may not know where they're going to lay their head at night. But the opportunity for them to be great is still there. Yes. But it's only through promotion of the words that we speak and give them encouragement. Right. Our prayer ought to be that our young men will become great men. Yes. Our prayer ought to be to God that even though we talk bad, that he ought to girl and bridle our tongues. The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among the members that it defileth it defile the whole body and sitteth on fire the course of nature. It is set on fire of hell. Oh, it was the word that you heard first when you fell in love. Somebody had to tell you how handsome you were. Ain't that right, they can do really. They had to tell you, baby, I love you. Oh, y'all women laughing, but somebody told you how fine you were. Yeah, they did. You liked the word that was said. Now, if they'd have walked up and said, oh, if, if, if somebody had have told you how ugly you was, and you were rotten to the core, and how bad you was on the side, without even knowing you, you'd have got mad. You've been ready to fight because the word that they were speaking were not the true word that described your character. Y'all got to come on here now. So, so what I want you to get from here today is that watch what you say because the word that some folk are talking is not the true character of Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church. God didn't establish this house to be bad. Huh? But this is a house of prayer. The tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil. Full of deadly poison. Ah, where we're blessed, we bless, we bless, bless we God. Even the Father, where we curse men, which are, uh, are made after similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, these things ought not to be so. We ought not to say one thing and then call on God the next minute and we out here cursing and acting ugly and see because one thing about it, nobody knows what you're thinking until you start talking. Hmm? Nobody don't know how dumb or ignorant you are until you start talking. 
And if you listen to yourself, you might say the same thing about yourself. But if you just shut your mouth sometime and just think of the goodness of Jesus and start praising and worshiping him with that tongue that's so unruly, defile and destroy things. But give God praise with that tongue consist consistently. I heard David says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And if his praise is continually in your mouth, you're not going to want to hear nothing else. But you're going to want to continue to praise God and exalt him. Ah. James says, do a fountain send forth at the same pace, sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brother, bear all the berries? Or a vine bear uh, uh, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and undued with knowledge, endowed with knowledge among you? Let him sow out of a good conversation his work with meekness and wisdom. But if ye have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. The this wisdom <laughs> descended not from above, but is earthly and sensual and devilish. Ah, for where envy and strife is, there is confusion. And every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them. That make peace. Oh God bless your hearts. We need to watch what we say. The only. If Trayvon Martin. Had I just spoke up that night. And just said. Why are you following me? My father lives right around the corner. And on my way. To his house. Why are you doing these things to me? But then when I think about Trayvon's case, I think about Jesus on his journey. All the good works and the words that he spoke. Doing good wherever he went. He gave sight to the blind. Made the dumb to talk. Unstop the fear. Ah, he straightened out crooked limbs. Yes, gave you strength to where the ankles were not strong enough to stand. He called the hungry to be fed. Yes, he did. Not by one, but by many folk. Yet, when the word came down that this was a criminal against religion, when the word came down that he was a blasphemer, I want you to understand that Jesus, my Savior and my Lord, Mary's baby, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, when the word came down after all the good that he had done, ah, he didn't have a bottle of tea and a bag of skittles in his hand. But what he had was the goodness of God. He had grace and he had mercy all wrapped up in his hand. He could have easily gave up on humanity. He could have spoke a word and wiped us all out. But I'm so glad that he had me in mind when he looked up toward heaven and spoke these words. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The word had power. Yes, they did. Mother born if Jesus had not spoken those words. God would not have forgiven mankind for the way we treated his son. Yes, I'm glad. 
and he spoke a word into the heavens. They were powerful, powerful words. Before time to roll on, and the soldier walked by the cross where Jesus was hanging from. He looked at the heavens and said, It is finished. He dropped his head in the lock of his shoulder. He gave up the ghost. something out here. He didn't hang there for long. He called and took it down. Laid it in a bar tomb. Yes, they did. Early on Sunday morning, somebody said it was the first day of the week. Somebody spoke a word and he got up out of the grave. He had a brand new robe on for he had the other one.
tight, but it's right. Shut up sometime. That's why Moses told the children of Israel and all of their complaining down at the Red Sea, be still and know that he is God. And he's still ruling regardless of what we think. He's still in control. Watch what you say. Sometimes you just talk too much. That's the message for the morning. And, and I hope and sincerely hope that we take more careful notice of what we say to people. Because you can look at a person and can't tell what problem they got going on on either side. Right you can speak to them in a friendly way and say, good morning. Mm -hmm. It might upset them. Yes. Be careful. What you say, be careful. The words of your mouth have power. Mm -hmm. And I just read to you, the 21st verse of the 18th chapter says what? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Of the tongue. Yes. So let's stop killing Ebenezer. And let's speak life into it. God bless you. We don't need to extend it.